I lived in Babinda, meaning quite a number of years now. And uh, we get plenty of rain. The second wettest place in the world, I reckon. What well, I reckon it is. And uh, I've been farming in Babinda up till 1964. Then I retired. And I built this home here. And then I started going, inventing machinery. This is where I invented everything here. The other shed or this shed here, they have been all my inventions, I did them here. You've got some fire there now, mate. Do you want to tip a bit of this coal on it? I manufacture the machine in my brains at night time. I make it, I dismantle it, I make it, dismantle it, and I try to see which is the best way that I think that I might be able to do it in the morning. He loves to invent things, he loves to improve the cane industry which has been his life and um, a very a very forward thinker, a young thinking man for his age. He's, um, he sees a need and then he, he makes something to, to accommodate that need. Every cane farm in North Queensland probably has got one of his inventions. Um, he's done scratches and planters and harrows. Um, and they've all been innovative and uh, they've, they've all helped the cane industry. They, everybody speaks highly of him. The trouble is each hero works as long as everybody else is happy, his wife comes last. Yep. I might as well tell the truth, isn't it? When I come to Australia, I only come to, to visit. But then I got stuck here, you know, meet him. Couldn't get away from him. Not anymore, he doesn't charm me anymore now. Yeah, girlfriends, you know. Plenty of them. Here's one here, straight. Wait, stop, stop. Stop, stop, see. You got enough coal there? I'll put some more on. Now, otherwise, it'll... I do a lot of thinking, and I do a lot of drawing. So, by doing that, you see where the blues are, that you made a mistake, and you start again. I've been in Venice since 1944. 1944. My first invention was the Barbie scratcher. You'll see the Barbie scratcher in action here when we uh, pass through the plant to get little seedlings after rain. He invented the scratcher with the twist and the straight tine that doesn't damage the cane, but the twist either throws the soil off the plant cane if you want to take soil off, or you put the twist the other way and it brings the soil back on if you want to add more soil to your plant cane. In the early days, we never had sprays like atrazine, diron, Moxone and Stomp, and we um, used to pass the whole farm with the Barbie Scratcher. I'd say every farmer in the sugar industry would have one, or maybe two or three. Yeah, we have the um, um, Cherry Barbie Cutter Dip Cane Planter that we bought 20 years ago, and it's still in use today, we do all our cane planting with it, and it takes the cane in this chute, cuts it into billet size, dips it, and then drops it back in the furrow, all in one operation. We uh, feed the whole stalk into the rubber drives there. It cuts it into that length of billet, goes round the drum and dips it in the mercury dip. There's a nice pink end. And drops it into the furrow under the planter there. Just drops it in there like that. Chain driven, sprocket off the tractor wheel, direct drive. And this is the only dip planter that's ever been made. And Chiri Barbie's the inventor. Clever, clever fellow, this Chiri Barbie. <laughs> Thank you.
he was doing the washing up one night, probably the only time he ever did it for Lydia, but he was moving a spoon through the water in the sink and he found the spoon went the opposite way of the way he thought it should go. Instead of going, coming up, it pulled itself down because the suction is across here and that's where you get the lifting power, the suction across of the oval. Helicopters, boat propeller, fans, anything at all on the same principle, which has more lifting power or pushing power than any other blade at the moment. We're clamping the, the uh, launching pad for the propellers. Now we're going to put it in here, it's fit it into the drill, and then we're going to start the drill off. We did a, a plastic one on a, on a fan blade and it flew to bits and nearly chopped our heads off in the chair. <laughs> but this one should be right. Looking at a super blade helicopter device. It has more lifting power than the ordinary blade. Nobody ever built any like this, and none exists that I know so far. We have a 15 year patent on it. I'm 90 year old now, and uh, I'm struggling to make, finish all my inventions that I, that I started off to perfect them a bit better which I think I'll succeed within the next few months. I had a lot of players before, like uh, Alaconius. Before I got sick with a heart attack, because I had a heart attack five, six years ago, I had all the yards full of Alaconius. And all the rocks you see around, and there's nothing now, I, I went and get it with a truck. We used to have a truck before. I used to do everything. I did everything in my, my yard. Tree, playing trees and did everything. Help other people, help the priests too, who used to go, the nuns and plant flowers for them. I did a lot for everybody. Everybody loved me really in a way, they respect me. And I had everything, orchids. But this one you never appreciate. Now, I, don't, I don't want any in the house, I like to do them outside. To show, I guess. Oh, yes, there's plenty there. Yeah. You know and uh, I got rid of a lot of them because. There's two trees, there's hundreds of them. They grow around the tree. Cherry, you're not your movie this time. You're out. All right, all right. Right. Well, these here are three-hole liver bricks. They're metric size. And uh, I built 13,000 of these here by myself. Well, the advantage is these here keep the rain out, a certain amount of rain, their privacy. You can't see through. You can reinforce them with steel. And uh, they're a better looking brick. Can't see through. But you can see from the inside, outside. This is the machine that vibrates and compacts, makes the brick, is made standing up. Now I start putting the machines, you switch the machine on, it vibrates. You fill this up with the mixture, and when it's level to here, I go like this. That goes down on the plate. And then I pull this one here. From there, I pull it right down to there, and then switch it off. The brick is made. Five, six seconds, that's all. So now I open, the, open it up. Lift it up. I stuck it in the railway over there. He should have had his own business years ago. He started in the 40s, him and his father, you know, and the, between, if he had his businesses, and he taught every, everybody's got the thing, he started them off because, you know, and that's what happened. Nobody's worrying about him anymore because he lost that when that was real good. Now he's inventing something else with a different knife again. But that's what he does. A lot of people say, oh, well, he likes doing things, but I mean, it costs money to do things too. Oh, yeah, but yeah, I made some money, yeah. I made money, yeah. I made money, but I mean to say, I spent a lot of money for other half from the brick machine and with that machine. This is our, uh, 
our rotor cull. It's a fairly revolutionary machine that we've um, we've designed, put some uh, fair bit of effort into, and uh, it's going to help farmers uh, grow more sustainably. He's a cheat, he's a liar, and he's a mongrel. It fits on the on the back of a tractor on the PDO, uh, the PDO hook, hooking up in here, PDO being the power takeoff. Uh, where it drives, you can then see that it, it actually spins the blades in underneath. I gave him the machine, my machine and my idea to build them for me. Well, I wouldn't say that he was possibly the inventor. I think the idea came from a long time ago. Um, the horizontal action, he was certainly the one that got us involved in it and uh, got going. He had a machine that he'd been playing with for some time and uh, we took hold of it and uh, I suppose reinvented the wheel. Yeah, had he been honest, I would have given him anything he wanted. But he lied to me, cheated me, and that's why I don't want anything to do with him. Everybody in North Queensland knows the story, they know he invented it. Uh, Wilkinson then got a grant from the government, I believe, and he did print in the paper that he invented the machine and we, we got onto him through a solicitor and made him print a retraction that Chero invented the machine. And he said it was a, a wheelbarrow when he got it from Chero and he's turned into a Rolls Royce sort of thing, but it worked perfectly. I mean, Chero won Inventor of the Year at the, at the Townsville uh, farm show and he also won at Tolga and he won at um, Atherton, I think. And so it was, a, it was a going concern. It was a, a, a machine that operated well. I think Wilkinson refined it and got a better gearbox and a few things like that, but it's basically the same machine. What he's doing now is he's developed this other blade, which we've got a patent on, and um, Chero's applied for the patent and been granted it. And um, he's going to hopefully get some honest manufacturer to, uh, to manufacture the, the improved blade and the improved machine. Well, I'm trying to work out a new idea, which I hope it'll work, and it might not work at all. But still and all, if you don't try, you'll never bloody know. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to make out something better. I have a machine here, built by Lily, and I borrowed it of a farmer to uh, improve the system of cultivating the soil, which I applied uh, my idea of my, my patent of, I uh, have patent of the new type of blades I invented, and apply them to this machine here to see if we can make it work 100% better than what they do. He doesn't want to be old, he doesn't want to die. There's so many things he still wants to do and that's sort of keeping him going, I think. But he's 90 years old, you know, if he can get a little bit of money back just to see that he's actually won somewhere, you know, he's won something that he's done has, has paid off for his family and his wife's sake, he'd like to get something back. Well, she's had bad cancer, bad cancer. He's supposed to be second of me. Because I've been healthy all the time. I did all the work. I used to do a lot of, a lot of jobs, you know. Then I couldn't do my garden anymore, my house, anything like that. But everybody, I had a lot of friends, though. Everybody's been very so nice to me. At the moment, I got emphysema. Well, I'm coping with that with a lot of medicine. And I'm not too bad. I mean, for my age, I'm still pretty good. Not every day, but some days. Is a smoking allowed? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I smoke. He taught me to smoke anyway. I don't smoke until I was 25. I love smoking, though. Nobody can tell me I don't want to tell her. At the moment, she's pretty sick. So I hope she gets a bit better in here. <laughs> Thank you.